Hey, welcome back to the Race 3D Studio. Finally, it's been a long time. Uh, just for this stream, I'm going to be going over the Pro 3, uh, running through a lot of its features. I know we did a couple other streams before um, looking at the new machines, but I just want to kind of take more time with the Pro 3, um, go through maybe some replacements of parts. There are a lot of differences between the Pro 3 and the Pro 2. Uh, most of them are going to be just kind of quality of life upgrades. Um, so things like the camera has been upgraded as a higher quality camera on the Pro 3s now. Um, the run-out sensor is in a different location, but they does still have um, filament run-out sensors and power loss recovery. Um, biggest difference, we're going to see things like the uh, new plates have been changed from the Pro 2 to the Pro 3, and then you can kind of see it in the back there already. But that larger module in there, uh, the airflow manager system for the Pro 3s, is something new specifically. These machines... Um, and that is a big quality of life enhancement because it allows for lower temperature materials. Typically, you just recommend either having the lid propped up um, or fully removed when working on the Pro 2s. The Pro 3s, that system on the back, essentially it's designed uh, where there's that main housing in the front. And you can see the vents in there where it's actually going to blow air over um, where the kind of printing environment is on the back side through here. Uh, this is open slightly to uh, the open air, so it's able to take air in from uh, outside the machine and use that to cool the environment for lower temperature materials. So we can print lower temperature materials now with the machine fully enclosed at all times. We don't have to worry about whether or not the lid is on or off uh, like we did with the Pro 2 series. On the Pro 2s, they did have the HEPA filter included uh, for filtering out the fumes given off by, you know, a lot of uh, specific types of materials. That was in the back right corner, uh, sitting up there. The HEPA filter now on the Pro 3s has moved into the airflow management system. So that HEPA filter is going to be in the middle of the housing there. That lower component slides down, and that's your own HEPA filter. Um, that is separate from the rest of the airflow management intake system. So if that system is not on, that fan will not be running. It's not going to pull any extra air in. Um, it is just going to have the airflow route out through a separate chamber uh, in, uh, that's just going to run through the HEPA filter uh, specifically in that area. Um, another thing that, why that is really, really beneficial for the Pro 3s, um, something that was on the E2 series, uh, the detection for whether or not the front door and the upper lid, if those were opened, so if the door is opened, I can see up here there's a little sensor, so that's going to know whenever the door is opened, automatically pause prints. And then also on the upper lids of the Pro 3s, there's now a, a trigger and sensor built into the upper lid. So if the lid is ever lifted up off the machine, it will detect that, and then that's going to automatically pause. So we can again have the Pro 3s fully enclosed at all times, uh, printing all of our compatible materials. Looking a lot closer at the print heads themselves, uh, these have been entirely redesigned from the older's, uh, the older Pro 2 format. Before on the Pro 2s, if we ever wanted to replace a hot end, we would need to loosen the screws on the side, remove that side fan, then loosen the collet, uh, and then drop the hot end down. <clears throat> Once the hot end is released, there are four grub screws in the side, of course. Um, we'd loosen those, then the heat rod and thermocoupler would slide off of that, uh, and we'd still have those components uh, attached to the rest of the sprint head with just the hot end loose. On the Pro 3s, uh, we do have the uh, interchangeable hot ends. So if I go ahead and lift up that tab, the entire hot end assembly comes out. And this is going to always have the front fan, heat sinks in there, heat block nozzles, and the heat rod and thermocoupler are already all included. So I don't need to uh, take apart any components or do any disassembly. It's really just a quick pull it out, swap a new one in, and we have an entire one ready to go. Uh, much quicker swapping for going to, say, you know, different nozzle sizes. Um, and then I do find that this is still very, very reliable. Um, so if we are going from, say, one nozzle to another, uh, an entirely different nozzle, then I would maybe want to go ahead and recalibrate. But if we're just taking one of these out and putting a new one in um, or something similar, some more often than not, we can get away with not needing to recalibrate. I've been able to just keep going after a quick swap, no problem. Up above, uh, since we do have a new feature, those upper lights in there for the uh, hot end assemblies, 
those lights are going to coordinate uh, to when the machine is heating. So if I go ahead and set a temperature for us to hold on either one of those hot ends, you can see that I just set it to 205, and then it does change the color of that indicator light so we know that it is heating um, and that it is going to be holding a temperature while it is running. So we do have that indication. Another thing on uh, the printhead itself. So when we had the hot ends installed in here on the Pro 2s, it had the shifting assembly uh, servo in the upper section for that, and it only shifted the nozzles themselves. The Pro 3s actually run the shifting assembly within the entire printhead there. So you saw I, I just hit our right extruder, and then it engages that system. It moves the entire right side of that printhead extruder filament and all, so there's no temperature setting that needs to be preset. If I go ahead and switch back to the left. So now that we have the front plate off, uh, that of course opens up the tube in here. So again, if we do need to work on any components in here, I haven't had a reason to open this up yet. Um, again, it's a pretty short pathway, so it's not really prone to jamming. Um, filament does run through there very, very well. <clears throat> so I haven't had to open that up, just open it up to show it for our stream today. Um, but again, so really quick, really easy, getting those open and reinstalled. I'll go ahead and slide this back on. But another thing you notice at the very top of the printhead, um, that filament run sensor block is no longer featured at the top, like the Pro 2 series. Uh, it is actually going to be built into this module over here on the side of the upper frame. Uh, some of you have some of the older N series, the filament run sensor upgrade for um, for the N-Series machines, did have the sensor mounted over in this section, so it is going to be a similar location to that machine. The uh, upper block back here, this section that has our ribbon cable and the rest of the connections that go to the printhead, um, there's actually a connection point in this upper node. In the Pro 2 series, we ran all the cables directly from the bush control board directly to the printhead. So if we ever did need to work on that section, we have to run through the entirety of the machine. Now in this section, uh, there is essentially a breakout board. So if we did need to work with any of these components, it's all a separate system from this block and then everything else that goes down here. Um, so it's a lot easier to work on the Pro 3s, again, having the upper section uh, kind of separated from the rest of the connections to the lower section. I think that's really, really nice. Pro 3s run... Uh, a solid platform for the base. You'll see on the Pro 2s, um, and some of them, they can have the cutouts underneath in the bottom of the lower tray. The Pro 3s are entirely solid, and it uses that same uh, mounting system across the entire surface of the bed, so that we're able to maintain that level. There is a probe in the center of the printhead that you can see, so that's able, of course, to give us our automatic bed loading capabilities. All the options for checking the leveling and running a probe on this are going to be stored in here. So I can run either a 63 point full level or a nine point level. You can go ahead and just gonna go ahead and go over, home, should probe the bed. I'll just get a really quick sample uh, for our current flatness. This is gonna be essentially the same procedure you would see for um, any print that it's starting up. It typically will go ahead and probe the bed. Um, <clears throat> It doesn't need to probe the entire area of the platform. If you are just going to have a smaller section or smaller model printing just in a limited area, uh, it's able to only probe around that section. So it only needs to compensate for what's necessary rather than going to compensate for the entire bed for every single print. So typically for the Pro 2, we would recommend reaching out to us. Always we can confirm and then let you know if you do need to make any adjustments. With the Pro 3s, it's a lot easier on the user then to confidently be able to make adjustments to the bed. Um, so there's a lot more kind of in the user's hands on these machines with the capabilities uh, of the extra hardware that we've put into them. And there we go. So now we have a full digital representation of <clears throat> the bed that I can go through, check our flatness. It shows all the high and low regions. So again, uh, very, very, very useful. Um, the original Pro 2s had the thumb screw just mounted in the front. Those would screw down and then hold the bed in place with the rest of the frame on the back. The flex plate for the Pro 3s has the standard um, kind of magnetic array that you would find on machines that also use another flex plate. So it's able to have the magnets in there for all of those sections. Uh, there are thumb screws in here that help mount and secure 
the corners themselves. So it is magnetically locked down and then also uh, physically secured down so we can avoid any kind of uh, deformation across the entire surface. Having both of these out, then I'm able to lift the platform and slide it right out. And then we have our flexible surface again for getting parts off. And you can see, of course, the array of magnets and all the mounting points on that system as well. And we are running the same build surface uh, on our flexible plates as we are running on the rigid plates for the Pro 2. <laughs> and I know for certain parts um, that can warp very, very aggressively, uh, in some cases you might not want that flexible plate there. Um, having that extra bit of flex could lead into um, just an easier you know, risk of warping. So for uh, future machines we are, or for the future Pro 3s, I um, believe that we are expecting to come out with rigid plates for these machines as well. So if you are still wanting to work with a rigid plate similar to the Pro, uh, it is going to be possible on the Pro 3s. Uh, something on the E2s that you would have seen, uh, there is the button on the other side of the touchscreen here that's able to put the E2s into a sleep mode where it turns the main screen off, turns the lights off in the machine, and it will continue printing that way. The Pro 2s did not have this feature, um, but we were able to get it on the Pro 3s. So anytime here, I can hit that icon on the screen, turns the lights off, turns the touch screen off, <clears throat> just waits to be woken back up, and it will continue printing while it is running that way. So uh, we have built in a new smart assistant into the Pro 3s called Eve. Uh, and I do think this is a really, really cool uh, extra addition to the software for the Pro 3s. We can go ahead and get in here. Uh, essentially, just going into Eve from the start menu here, it is asking... Um, just what kind of things to help with if it's got uh, print fa print failures, uh, jamming within the machine, calibrating with a new filament, um, working with a filament sensor, and then just in general where to get support. So currently for the new Pro 3s, it is uh, a pretty tight, pretty structured format for EVE. We are looking to continue expanding it based on user feedback, of course, um, and just other kind of experience and what we think people are going to get out of uh, this system. <clears throat> but just for working with general... Um, troubleshooting and calibrations right now. If, say, for example, we're working with a print model failure, then it will go through specifying what potential causes might be for that print failure. I can go through and see. So if we have our issue with the first layer not sticking, wants to know whether or not we're using RAISE 3D filament or not. If we are using RAISE 3D material, of course, um, then that is kind of our standard control material. We can work with that right off the bat. If we are not using a RAISE 3D material, then we would want to go back into calibrating the temperature and flow so we know that we're running the material with the right settings. And the Pro 3 is able to uh, walk through if that procedure is necessary and then continue through the rest of the steps for calibrating. In here, now that we've let it know that it does have um, an issue with the parts sticking to the surface, it's a little blown out on the screen, unfortunately, but it's asking if it is printing too low, too high, um, or if it's just close enough, we can kind of see the red squares there. If we go ahead and say that it is too high, it then recognizes that the uh, XYZ calibration could be off, so it'll walk us into our offset calibration wizard. And then from here, it takes us directly to the calibrations uh, for running the offsets again. Anytime I'm running these, <clears throat> it is basically just going to ask if there is race C material. It'll go through and check for our uh, Z offset height, and then go and do a test print and continue from there. All that's built into the touchscreen, so all the calibrations are essentially going to be handled by the machine, and then it just requires uh, simple feedback from the user on where exactly those calibration prints are coming out. Um, the process is super, super easy. I don't have to worry about doing any kind of hardware adjustments or making sure that things are tightened just enough. Um, it's all able to uh, go through its test prints, ask for some small feedback, and calibrate itself accordingly. But we'll be streaming now every other week. Um, so if you guys do have more questions, want to go through anything else, um, have other topics you want us to discuss, do let us know. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next one. I've been Nick. Thank you very much for joining me. And we will see you next time.